Hey, I hope you're having an incredible day. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up the cal.com booking API the right way. I'll walk you through the exact JSON request that you need so you're not fighting with errors. Plus, I'll show you how to update your calendar descriptions the smart way so you can include custom stuff like phone numbers, custom notes, or even questions that might benefit you during that call. And if you want to follow along with the correct request content so that you get proper bookings every single time, it'll be linked down below in my community. And if you're a business owner looking to set up custom voice agents, chatbots, or anything else, there's a link to booking a call down below to see if we'd be a good fit to work with each other. Now, with that being said, let's hop into it, how you can build this out from scratch. All right, guys, so essentially I have a client and we were running into this issue where it would show no available users found. So the issue with this is that he actually was available for that time period that was trying to be booked into his calendar. And so reading through this, and when you search for this online, it's going to say it's because there is no time slot available, but that's not true. In all the cases, this error message will sometimes display even though the user is available and it actually has to do with your JSON request content. And so I was looking at other videos, trying to figure out what was going wrong. And it all comes down to this location portion right here. So if you specify the location as Zoom, if you specify the location as Google Meets, there will be times when it just does not work and it'll give you that error. And so the proper way to have this structured is to actually have the location with the value blank and the option value being blank. This came after a lot of trial and error, but this is the proper way that the location value should be set up because when you read through the cal.com API reference, information, their documentation, you'll see a couple things are required. So you need the event type ID, the event type that you're trying to book. I'll show you how to get that. The start time as well as the responses. So these responses, specifically name and email, are what's required to make that booking. But then you can also add in some custom values. So one of the things that my client was struggling with is that the phone number wasn't showing up because we didn't have it as a required field in here. So we'll add it as a required field. I'll show you how to do that, as well as if you had other custom questions, you know, that will benefit you on this call, providing you with more information. We can use an AI voice agent to get that information and then pass it as a custom field within here that would then land in and populate within whatever calendar platform that you're using directly under the description. Because the thing is, is that title and this description, even though you can try testing different things, you can try putting in test meeting description, you can try changing the title. There's a standard output format that cal.com uses. And as a result of that, no matter what you put in this description, even if you wanted to dynamically pass the phone number, or you wanted to dynamically pass other variables, that's, it won't work. So the workaround is that if you contain that information within the responses field, such as putting their phone number there, such as putting custom questions that will get populated in the description at the bottom. All right, guys. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is toss in this basic trigger right here. This will just allow us to test the booking requests before we actually connect it live to Vapi. It just makes things a lot easier connecting it to any AI voice agent. And so I just went in, you can search for the basic trigger and you would just go add an item just like this, hit plus, and then it doesn't really matter what I put in the name and the value here, just put in something because it is required and then that way we can just hit run once and it'll allow us to trigger these fields multiple times. Now I'm just going to go ahead and unlink this and all you need is the basic trigger and an HTTP request. So go ahead, add in an HTTP request and I'm just going to pull up the Cal API documentation so that you can understand what's going on and why we're setting the fields that we're setting at the same time. So you're going to want to click on the API V1 reference. All right. So within the quick start guide, we're going to come down to the booking endpoint. So create a new booking. It's post to this specific URL. So you can see it right here, everything before the question mark. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to copy that. We'll hop into our HTTP request. You can see I already have mine right here. I also have my API key and the method that we're going to be choosing is post because that is what is right here. And then you can see if we scroll down a little, all the fields that are required. So the API key that you're also going to need in the body. So this being the body of the request content, we'll need the event type ID. So in a second, I'll show you how to get that. We're going to need the start time as well as the responses. So in this, you can see the two basic responses that are needed in every single booking. 
we have name and email, and then we have the location with the option value, as well as the, just the value, which is the meeting URL, the phone number, the address. And we are also going to have metadata, the time zone, the language, and everything else is optional. So these are the mandatory fields that we're going to need in our request. And you can see here is an example that cal.com is giving you to show you the setup. So we're going to start from the top. So enter in your URL exactly like this. It is going to be a post. And usually the API key is contained within the headers, but if you look at the documentation, you can see right here, query string parameter. So we're doing the same thing, query string, and this is the parameter. So API with uppercase K for key, and then you're going to want to get your API key. So to do that, you would just come into your cal.com dashboard, hit on settings, click on API keys right here. And then you can just go ahead and hit add, enter in a name, and I would set it to never expires if you're planning on keeping it and then hit save and it'll give you this API key. So go ahead and copy that API key. So let's say we copy it. We'll head back in here. We'll paste in our new API key. And then you're going to set the body type to raw, the content type to JSON application. And then the request content I just copied from the document that I've shared with you guys. So you can literally just copy this, head back into here and paste it in. And a little pro tip too, is that you can see if I just hit control V to paste it in, it comes out looking super ugly like this. But if you do control shift V, it actually keeps the format that it's in. And this is just a little tip. And then just delete the, the additional space here and make sure that parse response is set. So here we can set the meeting title, we can set the description, and I just wanted to pull up this, uh, this booking that I kept. So you can see here I was testing with the different title, the different description, but it'll only add it here. It's not going to add it in the actual booking itself that is going to land on your calendar. So it doesn't matter if you go and you update the description afterwards, it's not going to change anything because that meeting will be booked onto your calendar. And like I said, calendar has a specific format. So now how do we get the event type ID? So there's two ways to get your event type ID. The first one is probably the simplest way is to just click on that meeting. And then you'll see right here at the top, you have your event type ID. The other way, if you're in the API documentation is just scroll down till you get to the find all events type. You're going to click on that and just paste in that API key and hit send. And now we can see all the event type IDs. So just choose the one that you want. In our case, I'm using the 30 minute meeting, but feel free to add whatever you want. And then you're going to come back in here and just replace that event type ID. Now, the next thing is the start time. So I have it specifically in EST time zone. This is my offset. So minus five hours from UT UTC, which is universal time. And I have the date set to tomorrow at 1 PM. So it's important to check that you actually have that availability. So all you'd have to do is just preview, see tomorrow. Okay. 9am is free all the way up to 430, which is the last meeting. So I know that this meeting should technically book. So the responses, eventually you would just populate that with the dynamic variables that will be obtained. So this is what is filled out. So if I come into this meeting and I, I'm just a, a guest, I would put in my name, I'd put in my email address. And then when I hit confirm, that is the response that is captured right here. So name, email, and then to give you an example, let's say I wanted the phone number as a mandatory field within here, and we were to run this, it wouldn't actually work. So if you come into event types and you go into the event settings and you click on advanced, we're going to add a question. That question is going to be the phone number. And then you can just put in phone number, make it a required field and hit add. And you'll also need to put it as an identifier here as well phone dash number, then we'll hit add. Now we have this required field. And so now if we try and run this with the current setup, I'll just do it as an example. We can hit run once we're going to get an error and it's going to say custom in responses, phone number, error field required. So now we need to add in this phone number just like this. So we'd come back in here and we'll just change email to phone number. It's whatever's in your identifier. So that identifier becomes the variable name that we're putting in here. And then you would just have to put in whatever phone number. Let's say you're also passing this variable dynamically, you put in the phone number here and then it would work. So let's say I put in this phone number, we hit okay. 
Once again, make sure you don't have any spaces at the end of the JSON, otherwise it's not going to work. And then we'll just run this once. Okay, so it's an invalid phone number. So you gotta make sure you put in a real phone number too. So now that I put in an actual phone number, if we hit run once, you'll see in a second, we're gonna get this meeting booked. There we go. I just got the notification too. So now if I pull up that meeting request and we look in the description, you can see right here down at the bottom, we now have that phone number that's appended to this description. So let's say that you did want to add an additional field, right? An additional answer that's obtained during that AI call, what you could do, right? We'll come back into the meeting. So let's say we added a question and it's going to be, let's say just a long text, right? The identifier is gonna be struggle. The label will be, what are you struggling with? And we'll put the placeholder the same and we hit add and we make it a required field. We'll just hit save. If we were to choose a different time that I'm available. So let's say now set it to 2.30 instead. And I run this once we're going to encounter an error because that field is now required. So you can see right here, struggle error is a required field in responses. So if you did want to pass that information, once again, you could just copy this. We'll add in a new line. We'll change this to struggle. So let's say it's his struggle is he needs help scaling content systems, just like that. We'll go ahead. We'll hit, okay. We'll hit save. And now if we run this once, you'll see in a second, that meeting is going to be successfully booked. And you can see that now down at the bottom of this event description, that required field is now one of the questions that gets added to the description. And so this is how you can have your AI ask you questions. We can take those questions and then plug them in as custom variables right here. So I know it seems simple when it's explained this way, and it should be simple. The main thing that you really want to look after is the time zone so that you're in the same time zone and the start time that you have is in that same time zone as well. Time zones is the key when you're setting up these calendar bookings. And so the only thing that would change is that this would then become a webhook and that webhook would connect to your VAPI or to your voice agent so that when you are triggering your tools, it's going to trigger this tool request, which is going to be your calendar booking and it'll book in that meeting. We're going to be diving into some really cool topics such as time zones, such as VAPI blocks. So how you can build more robust agents to capture the information that you need, how we can integrate memory into your agents, as well as building multilingual agents so that if you have someone who speaks different languages, the AI can adjust and ha handle the conversation in that language as well. So with that being said, I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.